So before we start shooting, there's some things to consider. Number one is that you should always shoot on an overcast day. And the reason for this is that the sun creates very hard shadows and you want to have the texture the most flat possible with the most flat lighting. So all of these differences in lighting with the sun eating the texture, etc., all of this will be done in your render or in your the project that you are using, not in the texture itself. Because if you take a photo with the sun making a shadow on the texture itself, and then, for example, if you want to use it on an overcast day, then it will not work. So always shoot on an overcast day. The next one is to face yourself straight to the subject. So if you are taking a photo, you should always try to have the lines of the texture the most straight possible. You should use a lens between 50 millimeters to 120 millimeters, because if you use a very wide lens, it will create a lot of distortions that you cannot fix. So it's best to use from 50 to 120. And if you do shoot with a smartphone, because nowadays smartphone cameras are quite good as well, so you can use with the one that you will always have in your pocket. And uh, you should always use the zoom lens if they have. Usually now they have even three or four cameras and uh, two of those are for the zoom lens. And don't crop too much the, the image, so the texture that you are going to take, because you want to have as much detail as possible. So I took the photo of this building and I just want to use the tiles. So this is the photo I took. And now we're going to make some slight corrections here in uh, Camera Raw to remove a little bit of the shadows that we still have. Even though it was a cloudy day, there's always a little bit of shadows, so we can just pump a little bit this shadows value about here. And the temperature, I can just select here one area that is a little bit too white. Could be this one. Okay, we can click here to see the before and after. So you can see that we got away from some of the shadows. And I'm also going to remove here on the optics. I will remove the chromatic aberration and I'm going to use the profile correction. So it automatically selects the lens that I was using. I'm using the 85 millimeter lens and you can see here the before and after. So we re reduced a, a lot of this vignetting that it has and some of the distortion as well. Okay, now we can press OK. And so this is our texture, but as I said previously, we need to make it square or at least a power of two. So in my case, I'm going to just make a new file, press Control N, and now here I'm going to make a 4K texture. So it's 4096 by 4096, press Create. Now I'm just going to press Control A, Control C, and then Control V to paste here the texture. And we can see that we still have some of these lines here. They are not straight. So we can push some of these rulers to help us. If you don't have the rulers, you can just press Control R and it will show these rulers. And you can just drag from this side and you can drag one like this and another one like this and maybe here on the bottom. So this is to help us to make our tiles straight with the straight vertical lines and horizontal lines as well. Now you can press Control T so we can call the transform tool. And we don't want this uh, here, these areas here, because it will be very hard for us to now to tile this. So we can find a better position, a starting point. So I would say it's about here. And then we can go here to distort. And we can push this here to this side. We can hold shift just to be horizontal and about here. And now this one to this side. Okay. And now if we push this here, you can see that it's still not completely straight or horizontal line. So let's push it up. Okay. And let's see this one. I think this one just needs just slightly here on the bottom. 
Okay, we can press enter. Okay, so we have the first base, but of course this is not tileable, right? So what we need to do, so we can move this texture lower, in my case, like this, until we start seeing some of the other tile. And now I want to scale it until we have just that area here, to the next tile, and scale it back here a little bit. We need to distort a little bit again, about here. Okay. Now, if we move like this, I'm not sure it will tile, because you can see that this area here doesn't have these tiles. They end here on this stone, and they don't have this uh, design. So it will not tile with this part. So what we need to do, we need to copy, put, first put like this on the edge, and then we need to copy one instance of these tiles, again, to this side. Let's try to find the best position, I think, starting from here. And about here, goes here, and here and here, and here. And now we can press Control C, and then Control V. And now just drag this until about here. Okay. And you notice that this area is here, it's a little bit lower, but that's okay, because it was how the tiles were put. So it's, nothing is completely perfect. And now we can merge these two files by selecting both and press Control E or right click and merge layers. And now we can just, uh, again, scale this a little bit. But in this case, I'm just going to scale by holding Shift this area here until this part. And so this way we have the end of the tile we just need to distort a little bit. Zoom in so we have a little bit more control. Okay. And uh, let's just see what's happening here. Okay, we need the left part, so let's just scale the left part a little bit as well, until here. Okay, now that we have our base, we can go here to the rectangular market tool or press M and just drag like this. And now with this selection, with this marching ants, we can go to image, crop. Now you press now you can press Control D to deselect, and this way now we'll have a probably perfectly tileable texture. So let's have a look how we can check this. We can press Control J on the keyboard to duplicate this layer. And now that we have here a copy, we can go to Filter, Other, Offset, and probably we'll have these values by default at zero and. Uh, we know that this is a 4K texture, so half will be 2K, right? And another half, 2K. And so we can see that it's actually tiling pretty well if we move it. We don't see any quite visible seams. So I think this way it's pretty good. Okay. And so we can now delete this one. We know that it's tileable. So now let's name this for better organization. And we can name this color map. And let's make it in a folder. We can press shift so it goes to a folder. And so this color map. We can make this red. And now let's just simply duplicate by pressing Ctrl J, 
just going to put another color here so it's visible. And this one will be normal map. And this one as well, normal. And so to make the normal map, first we will do one thing. We'll go here to filter and convert for smart filters. Press OK. And now if we go here to filter, we will find on the 3D generate normal map. So this creates a normal map, but for this case, I don't think it's the best one because you can see that it's uh, creating these uh, bumps on these areas that, that we know that the tile doesn't have them. It's just basically it's a painted tile. We just need a bump to be here on these areas. So the tiles have a little bit of height, but not the drawing itself. If the tile was like this, it had these bumps. It's a great solution. We can go here and we can even blur a little bit the details. We can select how much we want. But for this purpose, this one will not do. And since I'm going to teach you how to do all of this in Photoshop, I'm going to show you how we can do for the tiles. Simply go here and it will be a little bit of manual work. But we know that uh, we have this texture here, so we can simply go here and on each tile section we can make a selection like this and when you make a selection we can right click and feather to about two pixels we're going to select one of this white color that we have here as a base let's create here a new layer and press alt backspace so it paints with a color that we just picked now press ctrl d to deselect and this way, what will happen is whatever is white, it will be above and whatever is dark, a darker color, it will be lower. So this is what we want. We want this, uh, want this tile to pop in comparison to this mortar here. And so now we need to do this to, for every tile. So you can just go here and make the mask like this. You don't need to be completely perfect the mask but uh, something like this, it's fine. And then you feather it and do the same. And so sometimes it can happen a little bit of these details, but it's a quick fix. And so I'm just going to now speed up this part of the video, but you know that you have to do this for every tile. And so here's the finished part for the normal map. We can still increase a little bit this contrast by going here to the bottom and add a new adjustment layer. We can go and add the curves. So we can drag this to the right and this one like this. So we can create a little bit more contrast. Okay. And we can even put one S curve here after this. So before and after, okay. And now let's just create a new layer and do apply image. Okay, so this will be our normal map. Let's go now to the filter and 3D generate normal map. So now you see that we don't have all of the, those details from the painted tile. We just have the tile itself. And now we can control here the amount of blur or less. So if you want a little bit more sharp details. So I'm going to leave this to about one. And the detail scale is how detailed you want this normal map. But in my case, I'm going to maybe leave it about here. And you can see here if this uh, invert height, if you click it, so in this case, it will be the mortar will be up. So it's not what we want. We want this to be like this. This is the correct way. And then you still have these parameters, but I'm not going to touch anything else here. I'm just going to press OK. And we have the normal map. And lastly, I'm going to duplicate again. I'm going to create here a gloss map. 
we can delete these two and just erase this. This one we can duplicate, pressing Ctrl J, and just move it here. Now, turn it off. So this one I want to have, let's see, here, we can decrease this. So this is how glossiness it will be. We can turn this mask black and white. Okay. And so let's see. Now here that we have these curves, we can uh, duplicate this layer and move it to the top. We want to have just slight uh, details here from this paint on the gloss map. So maybe about 8%, that will do. Just, just increase here a little bit. Maybe five. Okay, now we can save these maps. So we have the color, the normal and the gloss. So let's save them. First, let's save the Photoshop file. So I'm gonna call this tile. Okay. Now let's save as Targa. I can call this my color map. Actually, tile color map. Okay. Now this one, it's the normal map. And lastly, the gloss map. Okay, now that we have all the maps saved, we can use them in uh, any software that you are using for uh, making your renders or your projects. In my case, I'm just going to show you this inside the D5 render that I have. And so now here in D5 render, I am going to select the material here, this one, and I'm going to use the custom one and I'll just load here the textures. Okay, now I'm just going to adjust here the tiling better. And let's have here a closer look. So you can see that these areas here are lower and the other part of the tile is higher. And so you see that we went from having this style on a building, taking a photo like this, and then applying it on our final render. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time.